languages can be related to each other because they belong to the same language family. We also saw that unrelated languages can be similar because they have been in contact with each other. But there is a third kind of relationship languages can have with each other. They can be related in typology. Geographically widely separated languages that are not part of the same language family may still share features. This is due to the fact that there are universal tendencies for languages to have certain combinations of characteristics. For example, there are languages all around the world that have the basic order verb, object, subject. But this tells us nothing about whether they are in the same language family or geographically close to one another. They simply share that feature. Just because two languages have similarities does not mean they are related. Many Papuan languages share the clause order subject, object, verb with languages in, of India such as Hindi. Many Austronesian languages share the clause order subject, verb, object with English. We'll look at some examples of different languages and the major features that unrelated languages can share. These features can be phonological, morphological or are related to the syntax. So, phonology. One difference in the phonology of languages is that some languages use tone and others don't. This means a group of phonemes together might mean one thing if it is said with rising pitch and something completely different if it is said with falling pitch or with level pitch and so on. In tonal languages, the pitch is just as important a part of the meaning of a word as its phonetic sounds. Sinitic languages like Mandarin have tone and some unrelated Southeast Asian languages like Vietnamese and Thai also have tone. Tone is an aerial or geographic feature for Southeast Asian languages. But there are many other languages around the world that are not in the same family or geographically related to Sinitic languages that also have tone. For example, Yoruba, a Niger-Congo language of Nigeria, Gadsa, a Trans-New Guinea language of Papua New Guinea, and Koasati, a Hokan Suan language of the USA, all have tone. And this map shows the distribution of tonal languages in the world. Languages differ in how complex they are in their morphology. There are four types, isolating, agglutinating, fusional, and polysynthetic. So Mandarin and Vietnamese are examples of isolating languages. So one word equals one morpheme. So this example from Mandarin, I just want for you bring one cup tea, which means I'm just about to bring you a cup of tea. Yan Yua and Finnish are agglutinating languages. So one word is many morphemes and one morpheme has one function. So here, for example, us, they wash past customary, which means they used to wash us. Latin and Russian are fusional or sometimes called inflecting languages. So one word has many morphemes and one morpheme has many functions. So this example from Latin, we've got queen, feminine singular nominative, slave, masculine singular accusative, and C, third person singular subject past. So the queen saw the slave. Tiwi and West Greenlandic are polysynthetic languages. So one word has very many morphemes and one morpheme has one or more functions. So an example from Tiwi, an Australian Aboriginal language, he towards morning start with in vehicle go. So he's coming along in a vehicle in the morning and that's just one word. Languages can be of the same type because they share the same word order. So these are all of the basic word orders. We can have SVO, VOS, OVS, SOV, VSO and OSV. So let's have a look at some examples of different languages which all have different word orders. So in English, a subject verb object language, we would say Tom ate the chicken. Turkish is a subject object verb language, so Hassan ox bought, meaning Hassan bought the ox. Fijian is a VOS language, so see the dog the woman would mean the woman saw the dog. Kokota 
an Austronesian language from the Solomon Islands is a VSO language. So bite the dog the pig would mean the dog bit the pig. Hikariana, a Caribbean language from Brazil, has OVS as their order. So man grabbed jaguar would mean the jaguar grabbed the man. Tobati, an Austronesian language from West Papua, uses the order OSV. So dog pig see means that the pig saw the dog. Both verb object and object verb languages can be found on every continent and in a number of different language families. If you look at this map, you'll see that in this relatively restricted area of Western Sub-Saharan Africa, languages of both types are found. Some languages place the head of a phrase before everything else, so at the left edge of the phrase, and others place the head of the phrase after everything else, so at the right edge. Japanese is a right-headed language. This means that heads come after their dependents, so postpositions come after their noun phrase, nouns come after their adjectives and after their possessors, and verbs come after their objects. On this slide here, the heads are in bold. The Malagasy language, an Austronesian language from Madagascar, is left-headed. This means that their heads come before their dependents, so prepositions come before their noun phrase, nouns come before their adjectives and before their possessors, and verbs come before their objects. So you can see this here on this slide where the heads are in bold. We've looked at how different languages can share similar features and so be of the same type. Now we're going to look at why one single language can develop different variations. Variation is a central fact of human language. That language is never exactly the same as it was before. Even if you recorded yourself saying the same word over and over again and tried to say it exactly the same way, there would still be slight variations each time. Most variations in pronunciation aren't significant because the brain doesn't recognise them. As long as the pronunciation of a, of a certain sound is within a certain range, it doesn't matter a lot how the sound is produced, the brain will recognise all examples from within the acceptable range as being a particular sound. However, if you intend to make sound A, but you actually make a sound with the, within the pronunciation range for sound B, then the brain will notice that there's been a variation. This is actually what does happen in language over time. So for example, the sounds I and OI are very similar to one another. You can think of them as adjacent units on the continuum of sound. Most of the time, variations in the pronunciation of I go unnoticed. But sometimes people cross the boundary between the two and this is noticeable. People do notice when a word like my is pronounced moi, and indeed like is pronounced as loik. Over long periods of time, these kinds of changes can accumulate and you can get great differences. About 2,000 years ago, English and German were one single language, but over time, with the accumulation of various changes, they have become quite different from one another. This same kind of gradual change has happened all over the world, but change doesn't have to produce different languages, it can also produce different varieties within a language. There are two main kinds of variation, geographical and social. Geographical variation is described in terms of the concepts dialect and language. We looked at what a dialect is in a previous tutorial, but we'll just do a quick review. Two speech varieties are regarded as dialects of a single language if they're mutually intelligible. Two speech varieties are regarded as different languages if they aren't mutually intelligible. But remember there's an exception to this rule. Two speech varieties which aren't mutually intelligible can still be dialects of an overall language. If there is a chain of mutually intelligible varieties, then they're analysed as dialects of an overall language. Geographical variation is not a very noticeable feature of Australian English. This is probably because of the high rates of mobility of the Australian population since the beginning of settlement. 
Other areas with high population mobility since the beginning of colonisation, like Western Canada and the Western United States, also show no immediately noticeable regional variation. But even though it isn't very noticeable, there is a regional variation in Australian English. Some people have identified different dialects of Australian English. They are consistently different, but mutually intelligible. So this table shows the percentage of people who use a short A rather than a long A sound in the words at the left. So dance versus dance and so on. You can see that speakers from South Australia have significantly lower frequencies of short A speakers than speakers from elsewhere. And similar patterns are found for other pronunciations and show regional variations. People's social background affects which linguistic variety they use when they speak. Every speaker has an accent when they speak, which is associated with their geographical location and the dialect they speak will have differences in grammar and vocabulary. Some dialects are prestigious when used in some social situations or some social groups. Historically, the most prestigious dialect of English is the received pronunciation, the Queen's English or BBC English. It's difficult to separate regional and social factors because people from a certain region or area are often associated with certain social classes as well. But it's accepted that in Australia there are three general dialects or accents of English, broad, general and cultivated. These are associated with regional areas and also with social status or class. Even though Australians like to think of themselves as egalitarian and not having social classes, there are expectations that someone with a high socioeconomic position will speak a higher prestige variety of Australian English. This table shows some of the differences in vowel pronunciation between received pronunciation and the Australian English dialects.